we gonna jump into these motherfucking emails off rip. <laughs> ask Danny. All right, ask Danny. You motherfuckers can send y'all motherfucking emails too. Hold up. <laughs> Ask Danny, you know, you need some advice. You want me to, you know, help you out. You want me to help you figure it out. You get what I'm saying? You can send your motherfucking emails to Danny at the Danny Brown Show.com, please. You know what I'm saying? Hit your boy up at Danny at the Danny Brown Show.com. You know, you can get, you know, I'll let you know what's going on with your life. So now this right here is, um, should I fuck a hippie chick? Which actually sounds like a Judy Bloom book. You know what I'm saying? Last weekend, I mean, I don't know why I'm talking like that. Like he a nerd, like that, cause I I feel like that's a uh, you got to kind of be a little um, you know what I'm saying, a little a little prude, a little you know what I'm saying, a little conservative. Just even be saying that, you get what I'm saying? Should I fuck? Should you? What are you? I mean, what do you? If, if you a single man out here, you don't have no. You get what I'm saying? Like you like women, you know? Like I mean, why not try it out? But I'm answering the question before, so let me see. Last weekend, I met this hot white girl at a bar. She had little tattoos on her arms and her nose piercing. Not usually my type, because she looked like she smelled like hemp. <clears throat> a patchouli oil. That's what them bitches be smelling like, patchouli oil. And then they be burning that sage and shit, and for some reason, sage stick to white girls' hair. And ain't nothing, oh, wait, all right, all right. So let me get back. Um, we went back to her place, and this chick had crystals everywhere. Dream catchers on the wall, sage burning all over the place. I wasn't sure we was going to fuck or she was going to try to summon a demon. I got out of there quick, but she wanted to hang out again soon. Should I stay away from the hippie chick or should I go back and get freaky? You know what I'm saying? Terry. Shouts out to Terry. But yeah, man, you should definitely go back and get freaky if you're a um, single man. And, you know, I mean, just you got to understand that um, if, if, if it's something that you're not really ready for mentally and maybe physically, too, because it, it, it could be a big ordeal. I mean, you probably shouldn't, because she going to put some shit on you. Like, that motherfucker going to be, it's going to be out cold. She going to do some shit to you you never had done before. It's going to be good. You get what I'm saying? I tell them all the time, any bitch wear toe rings, definitely like anal. So, and I'm pretty sure the hippie chick is wearing toe rings. And so, yeah, it's going to be a great time. So, it depends on what you want in your life. You might not be, you know, looking for those kind of things. You might be like, yo, you know, I'm ready to settle down. I want a good girl. I want this and that. Because I don't really know if hippie chicks are good girls because they like free spirits and shit. You get what I'm saying? So she might, you know, she can always meet her soulmate. Every other month, she's going to meet a new soulmate. So you got to uh, you got to be prepared for that. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's what you're looking for in life, you know? But shouts out to you, Terry. Okay, next up we got. Fuck my ex. Why is all these horny, man? What is up with these horny emails, man? <laughs> God damn. What's going on? So now it's a um, fuck my ex's boss. I was dating my boyfriend for three years. Whoa, hold, hold up. Hold up. What? Oh, I thought this was rooting by a guy for a minute. Hold up. Okay. Fuck my ex's boss. <laughs> I was dating my boyfriend for three years and it was going good until a couple months ago. He started getting sketchy and coming home late. I could tell he was acting weird around his phone and I knew he was keeping secrets, so I put an air tag in it. See, see, see. You wrong. Like, that's getting like, come on, man. I put an air tag in his car and found out he was fucking some other chick. I dumped him immediately and I, I dumped him immediately, but I wanted to get back at him. So, oh my God. So I started sleeping with his boss and today I just got him fired. <laughs> Did I go too far? You bet I'm coming up in May. Maddie. Um... Yeah, you definitely went too far. You a crazy bitch. Don't nobody supposed to be putting motherfucking tracking devices. You fucking Corella DeVille spy. Like you motherfucking, like you Rocky, like you beefing with the bitch from Rocky and Bullwinkle or something. That's what it sound like. That's who he dating, the bitch from the Rocky and Bullwinkle, man. A Russian bitch, man. God damn, man. Like, cause that's, I mean, when I, I remember when I first seen an announcement of AirTag and I knew that was just trouble. Like I, I didn't see nothing good coming from that. You get what I'm saying? I mean, I, I can see how it could help. Like, you know, you can put an air tag on your pet or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Certain shit like that. But just to be able to cop these motherfuckers freely and just to be able to throw them motherfuckers everywhere. It's somebody that got a box full of air tags, man, just doing creepy shit all the time, tracking shit. And you don't even know, man. So, yeah, I'm terrified of that, man. I might got an air tag on me right now. I don't even know. You get what I'm saying? Like, for real, man. This shit ain't right. And they putting them on people's cars and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like celebrity cars and stuff so they can track them and doing all this type of shit so i mean i don't know what what 
the end game was with creating the air tag. I mean, obviously it was money, but it has turned to some other shit that's not for good. So yeah, you're a creepy bitch, Maddie. And um, you went too far. And karma's gonna come for you. You get what I'm saying? You're gonna get what's coming to you. So shouts out to you. But yeah, um, yeah, that was wrong though. That was wrong. <laughs> I'm a little shell shocked now. You gave me PTSD. Uh, how do I get my boyfriend to propose? Hi, Danny. How do I get my boyfriend nearly five years to take the step and propose to me? We love each other very much, but he's stumping on the brakes when it comes to marriage. My mom advises me to just get pregnant, but I don't think that's the best idea. I know ultimatums are pretty trashy, too. What should I do? Thanks in advance. I mean, those are, that's always a tricky question, how you get somebody to propose to you. Because, I mean, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about being ready. And as and far as, like, relationships and when you want to get, like, close to, like, being married and shit like that, it should be open communication. So this should be something you should talk about. You get what I'm saying? Like, if you're ready to settle down that way, you feel like he's the one for you, I guess you got to express your feelings to the fullest to let him know and, and let him know that. You know what I'm saying? That's the only way he can really understand that. But sometimes, you know... Dude, you know, cold feet, man, might just not be ready and all that. But if you feel like that's the one for you, I will say stick it out. I mean, come on now. You know, don't just, you know, throw away five years. You know what I'm saying? Just because you ready and he not. Sometimes it's just, guys, we scared. You know what I'm saying? I mean, being to me, man, I'm not necessarily scared of getting married or nothing like that. It's just the emotional process of going through a wedding. I don't like feeling emotional like that. It just make me feel gay and shit, man. You get what I'm saying? Being in front of your family and shit up there, like, oh, you got to say bye. Like, I love you so much. I'm going to, uh, that shit make me feel a little creepy, man. I'm just not in touch with my feelings like that. That's why I'm trying out therapy and shit and better help and all that. You get what I'm saying? But for the most part, I think a wedding would just make me too, like, I'm down with getting married. We just want to go to the courthouse and shit and sign some papers and shit and do this the business way. You get what I'm saying? But we got to have, I got to have my mama in the room. You got to have your mama in the room. I got to be up there. We got to be up there talking about we love each other, walking around, doing last dances and shit like that, man. That shit is all, you know. But the thing is, I love a wedding, though. I'm one nigga that I, I cut it up at the motherfucking reception. You get what I'm saying? Like, let me pull up. I love, I love just to critique motherfuckers' weddings and shit, too. You get what I'm saying? You be in that shit like, this shit ain't going to last. <laughs> That be my whole shit. So I'm down with you know what I'm saying. But my girl, she said she want you know she want the the fairy tale. She want to go to Costa Rica. She want to get married on the beach and shit like that. But you know, I mean, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do for your lady when you love her and you want to do some shit like that. So yeah, but you know, like I'm down with getting married and shit. But I'm just not in a rush to be all emotional and shit right now. You get what I'm saying? Let me you know take some time for me to get in touch with my feelings. So that may be all it is, man. What's, Honestly, what's the worst wedding you've ever been to? Some hood shit. They got to fighting at the reception. Cause um, really, yeah, uh, it wasn't even like no. Cause you, you think like some bride. It wasn't a bride and groom. It was like the best man was fucking. Uh, <laughs> he was fucking like one of the um. The, he he was with one of the bridesmaids, but he was fucking one of her friends. Then they got into a fight, and then a motherfucker was trying to break it up because he was getting too reckless with his girl, and then he got to fighting with a dude. Like, I mean, it was like police was called, bottles was broken over people's heads. It was a oh, great time. Shit. It was a great time, though. I mean, I, this is a time I really wasn't, you know, I, I was still like a teenager. I was still like, you know, I just not started like selling drugs. I was like a little gangster, a little thug and shit, shit. Like, I didn't wear, like, motherfuckers wearing suits and shit to the wedding and shit. I showed up in some motherfucking um, big ass jean shorts and a rockerwear sweatshirt. You get what I'm saying? So it was shit like that. So I was on some gangster shit. Had weed on me, smelling like weed, smoking. I just, I, I kind of was like the bad kid at the wedding. They're like, dang, this is what this what Daniel got going on with his life. It's gonna turn for the worse. So all, the, all my family, you know what I'm saying? Cause you know, when you go to like like um, f family functions and events like that, like weddings and shit like that, you see a lot of family members that you don't normally see. Like a lot of times that you haven't seen in years and shit like that. So I remember showing up at the wedding, they're like, oh shit, Daniel's fucked up. He's a thug. He's not, <laughs> he's going down the wrong path, like you give it a say. So yeah, but hey, look, I'm here now, so it's all cool. It's all good. Next up, we got motherfucker. Oh, so um, yeah, that's all that is. Um, oh, she didn't leave a name, but yeah, um, that's all it is. Sometimes he might be ready to get married, he just might not really go through all the emotional shit that comes with marriage. You give it a say, and it's a lot of stress with that planning a wedding, make and the biggest thing for me too is being financially stable to even have a wedding. And to be saying, I'm going to marry somebody and be able to take care of them like that. You get what I'm saying? A lot of men want to be able to have their shit in order, have their shit together before they take on such a task. You get what I'm saying? So maybe just don't feel like he got his shit right 
you know what I'm saying, to take those steps. So I would feel like if you really want to be in this relationship, you love him like that, y'all, you know, don't throw it away that quick because he probably do feel the same way as you. He just don't feel like he's adequate enough at this moment to make something like that happen. You know what I'm saying? So that is that. Um, next up. God damn it, man. Is it okay to fart during sex? And hey, Danny. <laughs> I'm in desperate need of advice. My question is, is it okay to fart while performing an ad of marital lovemaking? About a week ago, my wife always... What? About a week ago, my wife was sharpening my sword. <laughs> in the middle of it, I passed gas. Very loud, but almost no smell. Tried to play it off, but she was not having it. She promptly stopped and scolded me. Fast forward to last night while I'm making relations. After a few minutes, without warning, my fart mistress let one rip. This one was not too loud, but man, did it stink. I paused for a minute, then thought, it only smells. Okay. We continued our love-making session and lived happily ever after. My question is, should I be upset at her for not being understanding of accidental flatulence doing <laughs> this what? Or try harder <laughs> to oppose marital love cuddles to let the monsters part rip? Always keep them high and tight, Taylor. I mean, I mean, one thing about that, man, I, I, it really seems like you got a stomach problem. Like, if you might got uh, irritable bowel syndrome, because sometimes people have, you know, gas health. I mean, like, stomach health, gut health, you know what I'm saying? That's that's the, that's the real big deal, man. So you got to really take, you get some um, probiotics or something. And it might have a lot to do with your diet. It might be what you're eating, man. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. You get what I'm saying? Because the last thing I'm doing is busting farts while I'm getting a sword sharpened. You get what I'm saying? So... It's obviously something's going on. I mean, it's it's obviously it's a it's a health thing with that. It's not really just um, I don't know. Maybe you get excited. You know, sometimes people get nervous and fart or some shit like that. Maybe it's just some shit like that. But and then you say she bust one and her shit was rocking. You get what I'm saying? So I think it's what y'all eating. Y'all got to check y'all diet, man. Cause I mean, that's what it be, man. You want to eat the water burger, getting extra mustard and shit. You get what I'm saying? That's that's the kind of thing that's gonna happen. You get what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so that's the kind of thing that's gonna happen. So, yeah, man, you can't be doing all that, man. That that's just uh, uh, for especially. I mean, just excuse yourself, man. You can step out the room during sex. It ain't no big deal. I don't stop and pause for a minute. You get what I'm saying? I don't pause during sex. Like, hold up, I need to smoke a cigarette. This shit getting too crazy right now. <laughs> and come back fully charged. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes you don't want this night to end. You want to make this last forever. So you got to come back <laughs> stronger and harder, man.